Hi, um, my name is Saravi, and I know I'm standing between you and the beer, so I'm going to try to finish this as soon as I can, I promise. So I'm here to introduce um, a new security feature for an AMD processor, um, and the work is being done with um, Kishan, who's online right now, presenting, co-presenting as well. Um, so let's get started. Um, I'm going to skip agenda. We're going to talk about all the stuff. So AVIC. Um, AVIC is pretty much APIC virtualization. It's being called AVIC, APIC V in different um, uh, vendors. But ultimately, AVIC is a performance feature for virtualizing um, APIC, which is a drive controller for x86, right? With the secure AVIC, we actually redesigned the feature to add the, um, the security aspect of, of of the virtualization here. And um, the three main focus is basically provide the acceleration for APIC register access, um, provide acceleration for um, IPI, and provide acceleration for device interrupt injections. Those are the three key main area, right? Um, the, the interrupt injection for the device, that's not going to be covered in this because AVIC has two parts, has SVM AVIC, has IOMU AVIC. We're not going to talk about the IOMU AVIC in this talk, right? Um, secure AVIC can operate in, in different modes, um, in single VMPL mode, in multiple VMPL mode. Um, but for the work that we've done um, currently, we're focusing on the single VMPL mode, um, which, re re which will require the enlightened gas. Right, um, and in the VC handler is is now going to be responsible for um, emulating um, um, other additional functionalities that not virtualizing but the hardware currently, um, and it's only support in X2 APIC mode um, for the guests. So from the uh, here's just basically the the hardware architecture point of view, um, AVIC is operating around a data structure called APIC backing page. And today's, this backing page is managed and owned by the hypervisor, right? So think about the secure um, VM, the page gonna have to become part of the guest private memory. So this is one of the main difference between AVIC and secure AVIC. And along with this um, APIC backing page in the guest, we also introduced another set of register called allow IRRs, which mimics what the normal IRR would be in the, in the APIC, um, which is interrupt um, request registers. Each bit within this register represent the vector that, that we want to inject interrupt normally, right? Um, so the guest setting all this up through the guest um, MS, um, MSR registers when it's booting. Um, now look, Switch over to the host side. The change that's happening is um, we're getting rid of the, the host side um, APIC backing page. We introduced another set of register called um, requested IRR. So this is the mechanism that the hypervisor used for injecting interrupt into the guest, where it say that I want to inject this interrupt vector and it has to match whatever the guest allow in the allow IRR before the hardware takes effect and inject interrupt into the guest. Right. Um, so from the software architecture point of view, as I mentioned earlier, there are three main um, focus, uh, three, three, three main aspects of, of AVIC. One is, uh, it's a little small. One is the um, sending API. So with, with AVIC, we can support different kinds of AP, um, API and um, as relation. For secure AV, currently we only support self API. So if there's an API that's not self, non self API, it's going to have to be VM exit and emulated in the in the VM oh, in the VC handler by um, go and set the 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 IR bit for a different VCP the target VCPUs right. Then it needs to VM exit out into the hypervisor so that it can go and wake up the target vCPU if it's not running. Or if that vCPU is running, it sends the doorbell to tell the running vCPU that, hey, go look at, go go handle this interrupt, right? Which is kind of similar to what, what AVIC is normally today. Um, 
Another aspect is um, APIC register access accelerations, right? Um, for some of the register that not that can be accelerated, typically it will get VM exit out. In this case, it will get VM exit out and and emulate it in the VC handler as well, right? And it might also VM exit out into the host to um, populate this yellow table, um, yellow box there, which is representing the shadow epic backing page. We can talk about it, why we need to have this shadow epic backing page in the host uh, later, but just wanna point out that it's, it's there. Another as the last aspect is basically the, um, when the guest tried to, um, when the hypervisor tried to inject um, emulated device interrupt, right? Uh, as I talked before, the guest needs to be modified so that it goes and set up this allow IRR um, bit within the guest epic backing page, right? And then the host has to, at this point, get the guest to VM exit out and, and then um, go set up the requested IRR bit in the VMCB before VM run it back and then the guest now can process, can 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 handle the injected interrupt. So this just kind of like give you the overview of where um, all the data structures are related to the different scenario and different level of VM exit that needs to happen. Question on the requested IRR. Does Ucode move, clear the bit and requested IRR when it moves it to the guest APIC backing page? Um, it handles that I'll talk it in a, I have, I have a flow afterward too. Oh. <laughs> yeah. um, so, so the requested IRR yes. is not really cleared by the hardware. Actually, uh, when we do a VM exit, the software takes the responsibility for clearing the requested IRR and, and the update IRR bit set. Okay. How is software supposed to know that the IRR actually got delivered to the guest? Uh, so, uh, so, so when we do a when you when we do a VM run, uh, the hardware actually uh, updates the IRR bits of the backing page uh, based on the requested IRR and allowed IRR bits. Uh, so there is like no real, uh, you know. Uh, uh, real status of whether the hardware has actually delivered. Um, but at this point, there is no feedback from the hardware, like if it has really delivered to the host, uh, to the to the guest or not. So all we know is, okay, before doing a VM run, we set certain bits in the requested IRR. And then when we do a VM exit, we it, 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 it's kind of like assumed the hardware has already accepted the IRR, which means it's it, at least it has updated the IRR uh, bits in the backing page. And then as part of the VM exit flow, we just clear it. And then again, during the next VM run cycle, we just again set the requested IRR bits and, and the flow goes, something like that. Okay, all right. Um... I can skip this table, which is kind of show the um, different comparison on the different mode of, of AVIC. Note, note that um, AVIC and secure AVIC will be mutually exclusive. It can be enabled at the same time. Um, and I'm gonna skip this part, which is kind of like go over how the host initialize, uh, detect and initialize the feature, which normally just look at uh, CPU ID bit and, and, and set up the MSR. Um, from the guest side, um, in, when it initializes a guest, it will basically send up the, um, the guest backing page um, and set the MSR to, to enable the, the, the um, security big, um, feature inside the guest. Um, the guest knows that it's running in a VM that has, sorry, on the hypervisor that has um, the secure AVIC features enable because there's an MSR that 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 when it um, that being exposed to the guest. So it, the guest can detect that as well. Um, the part that we, we kind of want to point out since we're running out of time is basically the part where the guest needs to currently be modified to set up the allow IR bit every time it try to um, update the, um, the epic vectors. 
And, and this is being done inside the ARC x 6 kernel APIC vector.c, um, which maybe we, we, we would like to find a better ways to, to allow, um, to set up this allow IR bit. Um, we look into uh, ha, um, introducing a, a new IRQ domain specifically for this um, purpose, um, but that, that's still work in progress and, and would like to see if, if the um, community have other suggestions on, on. Why do we need hardware support for this? Because if your goal is just to block IRQs, can't, I mean, and DOS is out of scope for SMP, why can't the guest just eat the interrupts it doesn't want? Can, can what, sir? Why can't the guest just do nothing for the interrupts it doesn't want? Because I don't see how you can possibly do this race free. <laughs> okay. Um, like sure. What's the value add from a security perspective for letting the guest have an allowed IRR instead of just telling the guest, hey, if you don't want to die on this interrupt, just have a no op handler because you can't block interrupts entirely. Let's, let's talk offline. Not all interrupts are interrupts. Uh, not all interrupt vectors represent the value of the Right? Like we'll talk afterwards then. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, on your slide to skip three, you talk about the VC handler. Couldn't you have a custom APIC uh, model that does not go through the VC handler? And wouldn't that be faster? Um, that could potentially, yeah. Because because right, right now, um, yes, I think that that could be an option. I think we should do that. Yeah, OK. All right. Um, so for the current status, we, we are actually um, working on a prototype that implements what we have discussed so far. And, and, and currently we got the IPI part, the, uh, sorry, the IPI injection support um, done. Um, and we got the emulate device and strap injection support done as well. And most of the work is being done by, by Kishan here. Um, and we will successfully boot um, up to 128 vCPUs as a, as a test at this point. And in the next phase, we'll, we'll work on um, NMI emulations support and an um, LFP timer emulation support. Um, <laughs> really emulation? Like, we have emulation. When it's specifically for the LFP timer and the PMX, not the PMX, the TSC deadline timer, is that ever going to be fully virtualized anytime in the near future? Mm, I don't know if I can answer that. No. No. Okay, okay, I get going, get going. Sorry, beer is coming. Um, so one of the issues that, that, that we are trying to, to, to resolve currently is that there's a requirement for the, the, the guest epic backing page to always be present in the, in, in the nested page table. And right now we kind of run into issue with the, with the uh, KVM MMU ZAP PTE because it, it just um, takes that away. Um, so the workaround right now is we just in, invoking the KVM TDP MMU map um, before we run do the VM run, but that does not always work. So, so we'll, we'll probably need to figure out a better way to do that offline. <laughs> All right. Thank you.